To keep your MapMate software up to date, there are two different procedures that you'll need to get used to. One updates the software itself, and the other applies what are called patches. The patches usually contain updates to MapMate Species Dictionary, and sometimes other additions such as new queries or similar items. MapMate makes it quite easy to get the software updates and patches, but you can only do this if your current MapMate license is fully paid up for the year. It's also helpful to make sure that you have registered with the MapMate website, so let's have a look at that first. If we go to the MapMate website, mapmate.co.uk, and the area we need to look at is the user zone. If you've never used the user zone, you will need to register with MapMate, which is a straightforward process. You have to provide the usual sort of details of your name and email address and set up a password. Once you've done that, you'll then be able to go to the user zone and log on. And you have to enter your um, center unique key and provide the password that you set up when you registered and you'll then be able to log on and we'll come back to what this list tells you in a little while. So having made sure that we are able to log on to MapMate, let's close that down for the moment and go back into MapMate itself. And the first operation we're going to look at is updating the software and we do this from the replication section of MapMate. Open the replicator and go to the help menu within the replicator. Click on that and there's a choice here that says Smart Software Update. Click on that and MapMate will tell you what it's going to do. It will check to see whether there are any new software releases that are more up-to-date than the one you've currently got and if there are it will download them automatically. So if we OK there, MapMate is now connecting to the web server and sometimes it will ask you for your password. Now the password here is the one that you used when you set up your account on the MapMate website. That's what it means by the user's own password. Usually once you've entered the password once it doesn't ask it again every time you go to the site but you may well need to enter it the first time. Enter the password, click OK. MapMate now checks against the server to see what the latest version is compared to what you have on your computer. And if you are up to date, you'll see this message telling you that you have the latest version. If your version isn't the most up to date one, then the smart software update will automatically download your new software and install it. And usually all you have to do is to click OK at the end. It's a really smooth and uh, efficient process. OK, so for this example, we don't need to do anything further. We can cancel that one. So that was the software update, and as I mentioned earlier, the other thing that you will want to keep up to date with are the patches that MapMate issues. And those are the ones where we need to go to the MapMate website and log on. There is again a way of doing this from the replicator itself. If we go back into the help menu, we can log on to my user zone account, and it tells you it's going to open your web browser and go straight to the MapMate web page. Having arrived at the MapMate user zone web page, you may need to enter your CUK and password again. Once you've done that, you can log on to the user zone. And once you've logged on, you can scroll down and see the list of all the patches that have been released over quite a long period now. If you look at the status column, there are three different things that you might see here. If it says verified, it means that that patch has been downloaded onto your system and uh, all is well with that. If it says optional, it means it's a patch that you can choose whether or not to um, download. And if it says required, that means it's a patch that's been issued that you haven't downloaded into your copy of MapMate. The advice is that you should always download all the patches except for the optional ones. Even if it's for a group of species that you have no interest in recording, it's still a good idea to keep your copy of MapMate up to date, and just occasionally the patches for a particular species group will bring in something that would be of relevance to your species group as well. So, as I say, it's best to do all of them, except for the optional ones where you can, of course, choose whether to bring them in or not. If you find that there are a lot of patches 
showing as required, then what you need to do is scroll right the way down to find the earliest one that's still showing as required, and then start to bring them in from there. It is important that the patches are brought in in the correct numerical order, although you can do several of them in one go, as we shall see. So in this example, there are five recently issued patches that are not yet on my copy of MapMate, um, so how do we actually bring those in? The way to do this is to go over to the patch column and go to the earliest number that um, you, you need to bring in and right click on that. What you see when you right click will vary slightly depending on which web browser you use. In my case it's the save link as that I need to look for, but in some web browsers you might see save target as or similar wording. So I'm going to click on save link as and I now need to navigate my way to where the My MapMate folder is stored on my computer. And having found my MapMate, I go to Data and then to Cache. And the patch has to go into the Download folder. So that's the one you're ultimately looking for, is the Download folder in the Cache part of MapMate. The patch files all follow a similar naming convention. They start with the number, they all say spawn, and they're all SQZ files, that's the file type. And we just click save at this point. Most of the patches are quite small files, so they usually save very quickly. So that's saved patch 435. I could now go back into MapMate and bring that patch in on its own, but it is um, perfectly acceptable to run several patches all in one go, um, as long as you are starting from the oldest one and working your way forwards. So let's also download the other patches we need. So go up to patch 436, right click, save link as. It should remember where you saved the previous one, so you, you will, should already be in the right place to save the subsequent ones. So we save that one. And then the same process for 437, save link as. 438, save link as. And I'll leave 439 for now, just for demonstration purposes. While we're looking at this list on the website, you'll also see there's a column called Alert with a series of numbers there, and these numbers refer to the issues of the MapMate newsletter that announce the, each new patch as it is issued. So if you want to find out a little bit more about what a patch actually contains before you bring it into your copy of MapMate, you can click on this link in the Alert column and it will take you to the relevant newsletter which explains exactly what this, the latest set of patches include and what they're going to do when you bring them into your copy of MapMate. So having downloaded all the patches that we need into the download folder, we can go back to MapMate and bring them into our copy of the database. To do this, we open up the replicator and the replicator will realize that there are patches in the download folder that are waiting for attention and you should see this wording synchronize system update those words system update only appear when it's a patch that's in the download folder waiting to be brought in as opposed to a sync file from another mapmate user we've downloaded four or five patches into the download folder but as long as they've all been downloaded into the correct location then MapMate will sort them out and bring them in in numerical order so all we need to do is to click on the synchronize button and it reminds us what it's going to do and it will now take a few moments to bring those patches in while it's doing that it shows you at the top here which number patch it's dealing with and you'll be able to see that number increasing if you're doing several patches at one go When it's finished bringing the patches in, you will get a message telling you that the synchronization has been completed. You can just OK that, and we are now done with importing that set of patches. If we now go back to the MapMate website and look at the user zone again, it appears that nothing has changed in this list. It's still showing those patches as required. However, if you log out and log back in again, or simply just refresh the web page, you should find that the patches you've just brought in are now showing as verified. So we can see the ones we downloaded are verified and patch 439, which we left, is still showing as required in this case. So that's all there is to downloading the patches. 
if you don't download the patches, your system won't stop working or anything like that. It will it will still carry on. But as I say, it is good practice to download all the patches other than the optional ones just to keep everything up to date and make it as smooth as possible to transfer data to other people. While we're in the MapMate user zone, we saw earlier that you can look at any of the newsletters that are issued to tell you more about the patches, but it's well worth signing up to receive these newsletters into your email box, because that's the easiest way of finding out when there is a new patch or a new upgrade to the software. So if you're not already signed up to the MapMate newsletters, the easiest thing to do is to go to your account, by just clicking on the button here, and check whether you've got a tick in the box here. So if that box is unticked, you should tick it, and then save changes, and that means that you will get each of the MapMate newsletters to your registered email address. So we've seen both of the procedures that you need to follow to keep your copy of MapMate up to date. If you sign up to the newsletter, you'll always know when there's a new patch or new update that's available, and then by following either the smart software update or going to the patches and downloading those, you'll be able to keep your copy fully up to date.